Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we remember Pete Pasquale at this Mass, and today we celebrate the feast day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, uh, associated with the founding of the Carmelite Order. Uh, it was back in the 12th century that, uh, according to the tradition that's been handed down, that there was a group of monks who gathered together on Mount Carmel, uh, a place that was famous because it was where Elijah had a famous showdown with the various priests of Baal, a story that's told in 1st and 2nd Kings. Um, so there's uh, a great connection to the Old Testament, to the courage of Elijah, but also to the founding of this religious order, and the Carmelites are also known for the devotion to the brown scapular, another thing that is very common today. And we can think of some of the great Carmelite saints, including Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and Therese of Lisieux. So we have uh, really a great tradition that was handed on to the church that is all connected back to today's feast day as we honor Our Lady as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Let us begin by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable intercession of the glorious Virgin Mary come to our aid, we pray, O Lord, so that fortified by her protection, we may reach the mountain which is Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Woe to those who plan iniquity and work out evil on their couches. In the morning light they accomplish it when it lies within their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses and they take them. They cheat an owner of his house, a man of his inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am planning against this race an evil from which you shall not withdraw your necks, nor shall you walk with head high, for it will be a time of evil. On that day a satire shall be sung over you, and there shall be a plaintive chant. Our ruin is complete. Our fields are portioned out among our captors. The fields of the people are measured out and no one can get them back. Thus you shall have no one to mark out boundary, boundaries by lot in the assemblies of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, do not forget the poor, O Lord. Why, O Lord, do you stand aloof? Why hide in times of distress? Proudly the wicked harass the afflicted who are caught in the devices the wicked have contrived. For the wicked man glories in his greed and the covetous blasphemes sets the Lord at naught. The wicked man boasts, he will not avenge it. There is no God, sums up his thoughts. His mouth is full of cursing, guile, and deceit. Under his tongue are mischief and inequity. He lurks in ambush near the villages. In hiding, he murders the innocent. His eyes spy upon the unfortunate. You do see for you behold misery and sorrow, taking them in your hands. On you the unfortunate man depends. Of the fatherless you are the helper. Oh. 
Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When Jesus realized this, he withdrew from that place. Many people followed him, and he cured them all. But he warned them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom I delight. I shall place my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not contend or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. The Gospel of the Lord. The prophet Micah today gives a teaching that warns us about doing injustice because that which we do to others will be eventually measured out to us. And it's described in this way, he talks about those who are planning iniquity, those who are lying on their couches working out their evil plans. And what's the primary um, thing that they are working on or that they're doing? It's the way in which they can then cheat others out of their property or their inheritance. They're going to cheat the owner out of his house, uh, to cheat him of his inheritance so that way they can accumulate things for themselves. But beware, because if you go about that work of cheating others out of what belongs to them, then the day will come when a satire will be sung over you, here will be the plain chant, and what is this? That your ruin will be complete. So captors will be sent by the Lord who will take away what you have. So your inheritance will be taken away. The fields of my people are measured out, and no one can get them back. So that, now they're, they're gone. And so in some ways, there's kind of a, a simple lesson that is there, so be careful. Um, so if we are unkind to others, then the Lord will allow us to suffer in, in, in kind. Um, but I'd like to apply that to the gospel today, because what do we have at the very beginning of the passage we heard today? We have the Pharisees taking counsel against Jesus because he does things like saying that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. We heard that just the other day um, in the readings. Here he's performing miracles on the Sabbath. So they begin to plot and plan. What did Micah talk about? Those who plan iniquities and work out their evil schemes lying upon their couches. But isn't that just what the Pharisees are doing as well? By the logic of Micah, the Pharisees who are seeking to take away Jesus, his life, and his inheritance, well, they are the ones, in fact, who should be deprived of these very things. Except for this. Um, the Gospel today quotes Isaiah the prophet, and this is what is so remarkable about Jesus. He is that good servant. So we're quoting the servant psalms from Isaiah. He is the one who will not contend. He will not cry out. He will not break the bruised reed or the smoldering wick. He will, in time, bring justice to victory. But he does so with meekness and with patience. And this is the part that really uh, makes what we believe about Jesus so remarkable. So Micah speaks of the, the justice that will be inflicted. And so there will be that consequence that is there. But Jesus has come to redeem even the Pharisees who are plotting and planning against him. So even though what they are planning to do is an evil, Jesus is still filled with kindness even toward them and is ready to bring that grace of redemption to them for those who will accept. In time, will they lose their inheritance? Well, it did happen in the year 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed, when the temple was taken away. Um, but there was that period of time, so 40 years from Jesus' resurrection until the time that Jerusalem fell, 40 years of mercy. And that's a wonderful way for us to think about this example of Jesus, this meek servant, the one who has come, not to repay in kind, not to immediately mete out justice, but instead to grant mercy and clemency, and that really is a remarkable thing. So let us ask Our Lady to intercede for us, to lead us to her Son, and to appreciate this great gift of mercy that he so generously gives to us.
let us stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the Holy People of God, that we might grow in our appreciation of the Lord's mercy, never taking it for granted. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are dedicated to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, that they might receive spiritual blessings in abundance this day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for a greater devotion to the brown scapular, that people might, in fact, be more appreciative of the invitation to follow the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, in their spiritual lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the suffering, for those in need of God's healing grace. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, remembering especially P. Pasquale, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the protection of our religious liberties, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we honor the memory of the mother of your Son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice may, by your grace, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to her sins, you have done great things, and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, and gave us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us honor Our Lady of Mount Carmel today as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thank you.